All right, good evening, everybody. I apologize for the delay. I'm dealing with a client and needed to take care of that real quick before we got in here tonight. Uh, all right, Let's see another thing there. Everything's up. I think we're good. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about Chapter 5 Fair Housing Laws. Of course, on a Friday, we're going to have a very long chapter uh, because, you know, it's either on a Friday or a Monday when it's extremely long. It never is, you know, in the middle of the week. Uh, but we're going to talk about fair housing is what we're going to end up talking about uh, this evening. Uh, so our job tonight, what we're going to be discussing, our objectives tonight, is going to be describing the historical development of fair housing laws, uh, as well as identifying the classes of people who are protected uh, against discrimination in housing by various different federal laws. We're also going to explain how fair housing laws do address a variety of discriminatory practices. And we're also going to identify uh, the exemptions that are allowed in the Fair Housing Act. Okay, uh, We'll further list at least three examples of housing discrimination that HUD has addressed in regulations and explain how complaints against discriminatory practices are going to be enforced within Texas. Uh, then we'll further discuss the protections that are offered by the Fair Housing Act and subsequent amendments, uh, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act, the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act, and the Community Reinvestment Act. Lastly, we'll go in and discuss the Fair Housing Act's prohibition of discriminatory uh, advertising. So we're going to go ahead and start off uh, with the evolution of the fair housing laws. Uh, now understand that there's been many different changes over the years. Okay, uh, and when we talk about civil rights, what we're actually talking about is is your sometimes you can say your human rights. Okay, the government should not in any shape or form um, there there should be no judgment. Okay, the whole purpose from when civil rights were initially created, everybody remembers this one. This third one, Civil Rights Act of 1964. Okay, but they don't actually know that Civil Rights Act actually started back in 1866. Okay, uh, and it basically at that point uh, it prohibited the discrimination in housing based on race or color. All right, this was back in 1866 was when it initially came into play. Uh, a lot of people thought that the race and color actually was in this one because of Martin Luther King, okay? What actually happened was in 1866, the government was basically told that we cannot prohibit housing uh, and other civil rights uh, based upon race or color, that everybody should have a right to housing. That's a, a fair right to everybody. No one should have to be homeless, uh, but again, it was to give fair housing. Now, there was the executive order number 1103 063 that did uh, basically prohibit it, prohibit uh, discrimination in FHA and VA loans. So it wasn't actually a legislative act. It was actually a presidential order. So uh, when it came down to discrimination in FHA and VA loans, there was not actually legislation. Okay, so it didn't go through Congress and all. It was the president at that time issued that there could not be any discrimination based upon race, color, religion, things like that uh, in FHA or VA loans, okay? Now, in 1964, the Civil Rights Act was created and it prohibited uh, the discrimination in any housing program that receives complete or partial federal funding, okay? So there could not, in this act, there could not be discrimination in any housing program that if it receives federal funding, you cannot discriminate, period, okay? Now, in the Fair Housing Act of 1968, it prohibits the discrimination in housing and it created a protected class uh, based upon race, color, religion, or national origin with certain exceptions. Uh, the whole purpose of this entire situation is that uh, we had to make certain by all means that when we're going through these different situations, that we're trying to protect people again, based upon their race, their color, their religion, national origin, all of these are basically, you've got to stop discrimination, okay? We don't want Mr. Stahl back there, who's the government, 
And we don't want Mr. Stahl saying, you know, people a lot of times, if you were not discriminated, say you were a, a white male, okay? So Mr. Eugene, you're a white male. We did not want Mr. Stahl, the government, to the, 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 the justification behind it is, if Mr. Stahl could tell Miss Linda that she can't buy a house because she's a female, what stops Mr. Stahl from telling you that you can't have a house? So in that situation is, that's where a lot of the arguments, this is where you had a lot of bipartisan agreement, was if the government can discriminate, discriminate, discriminate against certain people, then what does it stop for it coming on the other side? How, what happens if the government you know, say that, you know, it discriminates, this group controls the government, and they discriminate against these people. What happens if the government gets controlled by another group? Well, they may lift this ban and do what? Put it over to this group, okay? And so what happened is the whole purpose of these is that you have certain rights, okay? And that is why there are laws that tells the government that stops this whole, you can't do this and this and this, it's, it's equal. Okay. And now, can, and I really don't use, like using that word equal, because can you ever truly be equal? No, it's impossible. I actually was reading an article, and they were talking about that there is a organization, a, a um, what is it? Not, yeah, it is an organization at California, Berkeley, okay, uh, that actually they are trying, uh, this feminist group is trying to end up helping make it fair where men are normally what? We're normally taller than most females. Well, they are trying to get it mandatory against across their college that all women and men have to be of the same height, which means that the women would have to wear platform shoes because there's something about height differences and things of that, little man syndrome, little woman syndrome, all those different, it, they're trying to get it where everybody's fair across the board, okay? now depending on how you want to look at that, okay, it comes down to this situation is, is can you truly ever be equal? No. In the article, another thing I was reading about, they were talking about they want skinny people to wear fat suits, and they want fat people to end up, to try to end up seeing what it's like to be skinny. What they're wanting to do, and understand, what they're trying to do is in this situation is, they want people to see how other people live life is what they're trying to get to. But I don't think they're doing it the right way, if that makes sense, okay? We all have our own battles. We all have our own things. And so when it comes into these different situations, that's what these laws are meant for. A lot of people think, well, it's just the government interfering. No, it's really, it's limiting these laws or limiting the government from having overreaching control, okay? Because like I said, Race, color, religion, any of these could be anybody, okay? It's just, it's very broad. We don't care if you're atheist or Christian. We, everybody should have a fair thing because if we ban atheists, then if atheists take control, then they can ban Christians and vice versa, okay? That's true. We want it to be very split, if you say, where, where it is equal across the board for everybody, okay? So in these particular situations, what we're talking about is that these are the rules that come in. And so Jones versus Mayer was that the United States Supreme Court decision in 1968, it upheld the 1866 Civil Rights Act where race was involved and no exceptions could apply, okay? See, a lot of times, and the reason we don't talk about 1866 is because I hope that nobody in here was born in 18, or before 1866, because if you did, then we, we need to have a talk because I want to know how I can live that long. So, Aiden, were you born before 1866? Yeah. No? Okay. 1867, you were born, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. So, <laughs> just by a year. Just by a year. So, but the thing comes in is, like I said, everybody remembers in this particular situation, they all remember this one. They remember the 1964. Because what happened in 1964? What was the big deal going on in that time? Mr. Eugene, that's, I know you weren't old enough at that time, but what, what was the big thing in 1964? Well, so what was this right here? here? Civil the civil rights. rights. Yeah, there's civil rights movement. Yeah. 
So in that situation, a lot of people think that MLK was the cause of this. And a lot of people have hatred because they think that it was MLK that caused all this. Well, what's the problem? Was MLK alive in 1866? No. Okay. So in that situation, what it comes back to is, is that you have to understand that there is always challenges to these laws. Always. Okay. But the key thing is, is it's not a racial thing. It's not a religion thing. It's not, what it is, is it's stopping the government from ending up having power. Because if you remove these laws, then what happens? That means the government gets more power. And if the government gets more power, Mr. Eugene, you want the government having more power? Why? Because if they get more right. power, they take my rights away from them. That's right. They take your rights, just like everybody else. Nobody wants their rights taken from them. So that's why in these situations, they're not meant just to protect a class. It is meant to protect everybody. Okay. So in 1972 amendment to the Fair Housing Law, so we had an amendment that basically the failure to display the Equal Housing Opportunity logo and poster in a real estate office is considered discriminatory practice by HUD. If you do not provide the Equal Housing logo, logo and the poster, okay, in your office, it is classified as discriminatory practice by HUD. Why? Because without that logo, could I discriminate, Travis? Yeah. Or it could be assumed that I discriminate, right? So you have to have that logo. That's why in all marketing and things of that nature, we always try to include that logo, simply because we are equal credit. We take care of everybody. We don't care anything about you, about who you are. We care about you getting where you're supposed to be, okay? Like I always tell people every time, I don't care. I don't see people, I don't see their skin color. I don't see their religion. I don't see any of that stuff. When I'm dealing with business, it's dollar signs. So if I'm looking at you, Aiden, it ain't a white male, it's a dollar sign. If I'm looking at Mr. Keith, it's not an African-American male, it's a dollar sign. If I'm dealing with an Asian person, it's not Asian, it's a dollar sign. You see what I'm saying here? I do not look at people's colors, religion, any of that stuff. It's money. And money, does it have a race, religion, color, creed, any of that stuff? No. Money is money. Okay? And I, did, and I have a duty to do what? To give the best, the best services that I can across the board. Okay? So again, the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974, it added to fair housing protection and it prohibited the discrimination based upon sex. See, a lot of people think that it was, we gave basically women the right to buy and all, and then it was race, and then it was religion. No, it was race. And then not till 1974, from 1866 to 1974, Women were what? They were basically discriminated. I had one gentleman that I had talked to. He was a broker years and years and years and years and years ago. We were talking one day, and he was like, yeah, he said, used to if a woman wanted to buy a house, I'd have to call her husband and make, cer make certain that it was okay that she buy a house. I had to call the husband. So, Miss Linda, if you wanted to buy a house, I, even if you had the money, I had to call your husband and make certain that it was okay that you can buy a house. Now, how do you feel about that, Ms. Lynch? Yeah. I think we better... May I add something? Yes, ma'am. There are still laws on the books that say you have to check with your spouse. That's right. Yes, it is. One was about, uh, I don't know, if something to do with, uh, I don't, don't want to say abortion, that's the wrong term but something to do with fertility yep. and any fertility choices. If you are married, you have to check with your spouse first. You're correct. You are 100% correct. And that, in that situation, and that's a very good situation you as well. Surgery, so. Right. And, and in Texas specifically, if you want to have an abortion, you normally in some situations have to ask the husband if it's okay. Now the question that comes back to in this situation is, 
is think about this, and, and Mr. Eugene, I pick on you because y'all are here physically, but Mr. Eugene, how in the world in this particular situation, if the government can tell Miss Linda, or have, tells Miss Linda that she has to check with you, then Mr. Eugene, could the government come in and say, well now Mr. Eugene, if you want to do some things, you got to check with us. We're the government, you got to get approved by us. That's right. That's right. That's right. So a lot of people challenge these things, but what they don't understand is, is if you give the government that kind of power, we already know how the government is. Oh, yeah. We know how they work. Oh, yeah. Okay. But it comes back to that situation is the government that I would rather be able to make my own decisions than end up having to go ask a person that is hundreds of thousands of miles away from me if I can do something. Okay. Just like the tax, tax man and tax woman, they want to see everything you're doing. And if you don't do it right, what do they do? They audit you and they take your money and they take your house and they take your car, whatever thing else. Same thing comes back into these situations is that you have to understand by all means that you have a duty to understand as a real estate agent that back in that time, you did have those situations. You did have those errors in regards to that. And it has been fixed. Is it a perfect world? Unfortunately, no. Okay, it's not. But see, that's where it comes into, you've got to look at a lot of these situations. And like I'm saying, and as we teach through this class, there's going to be times where morally, you may be on this on this stand, but legally, the law is against it. But here's the thing is, is you've got to think about this. If the law says, for example, that it's okay, Mr. Eugene, that Miss Linda can have an abortion, okay, without your consent, you may morally say that is wrong. That is 100% wrong and morally I'm against it, okay? But are you going to allow the moral of what you're at of I'm 100% against it, I want the government to tell me what to do. Do you want that to happen? That's kind of where it comes into that. And that's where I tell people is, and I try to explain that sometimes, is yeah, you may you may be very religious and be against that, but do you want the government to be able to dictate what can and cannot happen? That's right. So that's where you come into those situations is, is and it, again, understand, everybody has, is entitled to their own opinions, and that's what's great about this country, is everybody has their right, okay? But the key thing is you've got to understand in this situation is look how long it took us from getting right here to 1866. It took us from there all the way to 1974 just to get women some rights. And they're still not full rights like Ms. Lula said. Okay. So again, in these particular situations, you've got to watch out for these particular elements. Okay. Then in 1988, we had the amendment to fair housing laws. And this finally added, look at how long this took, almost 100 years, we finally now say, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll now exempt families. So, so Mr. Eugene, if you and Miss Linda now have a kid, we'll let you actually go get a loan now. Okay? There's a problem there. Oh, and if you're disabled, we we'll finally actually will take care of you now. Okay? So again, and Ms. Lila and I, and, and I, we could tell you stories if we were to go into counseling, just to the, the studies and classes we had to take and everything, how if you were mentally disabled, it's not till recently that mental disability has been a big thing. Back in the, in the set, 1970s, especially back in the 18, 18, 1886 time, you had, a, you had a, a mental disability, they'd kill you, or they would do some weird experiments on you, okay? Understand in these situations is it was not till 1988 that we had familiar status protected and disability, people that were disabled. And we finally, people that had AIDS were finally classified as disabled, okay? So you can see our evolution here. How we, how's our, our progress so far? Extremely slow, okay? Not fast by any means. So if the Housing of Earth Older Persons Act didn't happen until 1995. We didn't finally start taking care of our elderly until 1995. How old were you, uh, Aiden, in 1995? Uh, I hadn't been born. You hadn't been born? No. So, I was, I was negative two. So. Negative two. <laughs> Mr. Grossman, how about you? Really? 
You got too many youngins in there. <laughs> Don't you feel sorry Don't, for me? Don't worry. In three weeks, we'll be teaching the courses. <laughs> what did you say, Miss Linda? Don't you feel sorry for me? Yes, ma'am. But I, but you got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so it shows. That's what Miss Lila, by the way, that's what catches me every semester when I talk about years. And I'm like, yeah, how old were y'all? I wasn't born yet. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> what in the world? Because I still think 1960s just a couple of years ago, or, you know, about a few decades ago. Now I look back. You know on what? That. You may need to stop asking that question. <laughs> 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 so, as you can see, like even 1995, all right, it, it, it took us till 1995 to finally take care of our older people. We made several changes to the 55 and older exemption. And since 1988 amendments, the Fair Housing has exempted from its familiar status provisions properties that satisfy the acts of the 55 and older housing conditions. Okay. So, again, as you can see in the housing discrimination, the Fair Housing Act, basically, as we've discussed, there's a lot of things that come along with it. Familiar status discrimination and the Fair Housing exemptions we're very key, okay? And you're gonna learn a lot about those. <clears throat> so we're gonna go ahead and start off with the Fair Housing Act, okay? Fair housing prohibits refusing to sell or rent to a protected class, okay? You may think that, and Mr. Eugene, you're not in this industry. Ms. Lindy is and everybody else in this classroom except for mine online. But Mr. Eugene, how often do you think that we as a real estate company, just our company, deals with that first one where a client may say yeah i don't want to rent to that person because of their that they're african-american or they're asian or they're hispanic how often do you think that happens mr eugene that we might deal with that a year in a year in a year probably not too much you'd say probably not much okay what would you give give me a number what do you think probably well, on average, we do probably get about 25 to 30 times a year that that might pop up, okay? And it's not direct, okay? I think out of my entire career, I might have had two or three that told me, I do not want to have this person or this class of people in my house. And if they do, my response is, thank you, sir or madam, <laughs> but you can have a great day, and I'm going on about my daily little life, okay? Um, because I ain't going to deal with that. I don't have time with it. Okay, that's what that's what I try to teach. And Miss Miss Leela and Mr. Jacob, and Mr. M Mr. Miss Eugene here, y'all probably learned that over your life that there's certain times that you just don't got time for that. You just don't got time for that. Uh, you just let that person move on down the road. Yeah, you might have lost out on a little money, but you got rid of a lot of stress. Okay. So in that situation, sometimes it's best to just let that person go, okay? Because I've had clients, not exactly to that extent, but I've had clients that have been very difficult and they will drain you. Just one person will drain you, okay? And you don't need that. So again, it does prohibit you from refusing a client. If they tell you that they want to refuse a rent to a protected class, you have to tell that person that you must do it. So, Aiden, what if I come up to you, sir, and I say, hey, Aiden, I don't want to rent my property to any girls, any sorority girls, because they're going to destroy the place. So I don't want you to rent it. But you can rent it to fraternity guys or any other person. I don't care, but I just don't want them sorority girls. They just, they, you know how women are. They're going to stop up the toilets. They're going to stop up the, the shower. And it's just going to cause plumbing issues. So I just, I don't want you to do that, okay? You, you, you got what I'm saying. All right, thank you. Appreciate it, Aiden. Against women. Yeah. What's going on? Discrimination. Can can you do that? No. No. You tell me. Well, sir, I have to. If you're going to put it on the market, it's open to everybody. You can't. You can't say you can or cannot live here. The only way you can not quote unquote discriminate. The only way you can do it is if they don't meet the criteria, like if they have bad credit. Okay. 
And I have had people that have tried to say, well, find something, find something about them to discriminate. You can't do that. Okay, I cannot, you have to understand, that's what you gotta tell your clients. Is if Stefan tells me, well, shoot, you know, Justin, their credit's great, their stuff, everything's good, they, they could get the house, you know, go, go do some digging, look on social media, see if they're drunks. Because if they're drunks, I'll deny them on that. Well, I can't do that. Because if I do that for that one person, what does that now mean that I gotta do for every other applicant? Everyone I have to treat that, okay? So in that particular situation, it has to be fair across the board. And I refuse to do that. I refuse to end up going above and beyond what I have to do, okay? Because then that means I gotta do it for every single one from here on out. And I'm not gonna do that, okay? Discrimination in terms, conditions, or privileges of sale, rental, or provisions of services or facility. Discrimination in advertising. And you gotta be careful here, okay? If Mr. Grossman is always utilizing in his advertising white females in all of his advertising, is he discriminating? Yeah, he could be. Because what's that doing, Mr. Grossman, when you do that? You're using nothing but all white females in all of your, your marketing. What's the problem? It's implied that you've been discriminating. That's right. Your actions are showing that you end up, you prefer white females. Unless, you know, it's just a fluke and all of that Well, but you have a duty to keep an eye on it. You have a duty, okay? You also in the situation representing that housing is not available. You can't do this either. Mr. Eugene says, hey, uh, I want you to list my house, Justin. Okay, Dad, I'll, I'll list it for you. Put it up there, get it on the market. And then uh, Mr. Keith comes and applies. And I get the application and I share it with Mr. Eugene and he sees African-American and goes, no, nope, mm -mm, nope. But tell, tell him that the house just went off the market. Well, why? Well, I don't want, I don't want African-Americans living in my house. Can't do that. Because why? Is the house actually not available, Mr. Eugene? It is available. It is available. You, in that situation, yeah, why? <laughs> and that's what I tell people all the time is, why do you care who's in your house? You don't live there. They're paying you. What 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 matters if it's white, black, uh, Hispanic, Asian? Who cares? Their money spends just as good as your money. Okay. So in that situation, is you can't do something to that extent. For profit, inducing the sale because of the entry into a neighborhood of a protected class. Okay. You can't in a situation walk in and say, oh goodness, Miss Linda, Miss Linda, you, you need to you need to move quick because because we're ending up, we have a bunch of these Asians peoples that are coming into your house. You need or into this neighborhood. You need to sell quick. What's your problem? I can't do that. I can't do that. That is that is in that situation. I am trying to induce a sale because I'm trying to scare them. Okay, you can't do that. Refusing to- Are there people who really do that? There are actually, Miss Lila, not so much here, but in where there's a ton of agents, a ton of agents and very little sales, they'll do anything, Miss Lila, to get a sale. And it's sad to say, they'll do anything to get a sale. Wow, okay. It, I, I will give you one example, Miss Layla, and it's sad, but it always is in some situations, it's the African American community. It's sad. But what happens is there are certain neighborhoods when it's high end neighborhoods and an African American will move into the neighborhood. There are agents that will go to that neighborhood and tell them, hey, they're already bringing in the people. You better sell right now while the prices are there. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And it's sad. It's sad because of that situation, you do end up, people are doing that force sale. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And right now, and say, say that out loud so, Mr. Yes. so everybody can hear that. That's another one. I've actually experienced people doing that with just people from California moving in where people are like, well, they're already starting to come. So why will everybody, you know, get up and let's go or whatever. So people are yep. not for a race or a color, but just because they're from California. So it makes it. Well, we've been indoctrinated to have our bias against Californians. I have experienced that 
um, just by the fact that they're from California, I've been kind of groomed to dislike them, mm-hmm. believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what's wrong with them? And they said they're a bunch of hippies and they worship lettuce of heads, a head of lettuce. Yep. And I said, that sounds stupid. Yeah. And that, and that right there, that right there, Miss Leela, shows you at that point that what happens, and, it, and I'll be real honest with all of you, people, a, a agent, and I'm going to say a crooked agent. If I was to say majority of agents, I would say majority of agents are very, very honest, yeah. truthful, and hardworking people. I'd say 90 to 95% of them are good people, okay? But it's just like in any other industry. There's that 1% to 2% that give the whole industry a bad name. And there are people that they are very greedy. They will do whatever they have to to get a sale. And that means that they've got to go in and freak people or cause what's called panic selling. They'll do it. They will go in and they will make a big thing to cause a panic selling so everybody will just sell their house and they get a bunch of listings and get them sold and make the money and displace the individuals that were there when there was no need for panic selling. Do California State get to ride horses to work every day? When I used to go to law school, yes. They literally actually I've heard that before. They like they actually asked me when I was when I was doing my schooling through California, they actually asked me if I rode a horse to work in back. When I, did a, when I went to the UK, there was a group of us from Texas and a group from Montana that went there together. And everybody in the UK always asked if we, we rode our horses to school and blah, blah, and whatever. And the funniest part was the people that were with us from Montana was a town of like 100 people. Yeah. And they actually did because yeah. they just had a really small rural. They had one stoplight in the whole town or whatever. So they were all like, oh, you Texans. And the people from Montana were like, that's, that's us. We're yeah. like, we do that. <laughs> yeah, people don't think that we end up that we actually have cars. I mean, they think that we are very much we're uncivilized. Just and like the old West movies. movies. Yeah, it's like no, the old West. Texas, yeah, Texas. Yeah, my teacher got to fight. Yeah, every yeah, 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 that was another <laughs> one. That was another one that they had asked if we had oil oil wells in our backyards. Yeah, so, I mean, Miss Miss Lee. I had another. I had another question. Yes, ma'am. When you had mentioned that if someone had posted something for sale and, and say someone they didn't want applies and they just say, okay, I don't want that person. You're, of course, you can't, com- you can't comply with that. Right. But can they just, I think it's called, I can't get the right term. It's not, is it revocation? Will they just just say, I don't want, I don't want to work with you anymore because well, you won't do what they say? Yes, yes, they can terminate the contract. So if go ahead, let's play that out. So Mr. Eugene ends up, Keith has gone over and he's applied. You know, I've done everything that I was supposed to. I get it to Mr. Eugene and he sees that Keith is African-American. And he says, I don't want to deal with this. I'm going to tell Mr. Eugene, I'm sorry, but I did what I was supposed to. I listed your house. I got you a potential tenant. They're qualified. You owe me a commission. He could at that point, Eugene could terminate me, terminate my relationship. But Miss Leela, here's the best point. I brought him a ready, willing, and able tenant that he refused. So while he can terminate my relationship, he still has to pay me for that commission. So at oh, that okay. point, I brought the person. If he declines the person because of something that is a protected class, he still owes me my money. Okay. And that is a person that I would actually go after for commission because of the fact is I don't care about that person's bias. That's not my problem. I did my job. I brought somebody to him. If they are biased or racist or any of that stuff, that ain't my problem. I did my job. You're going to pay. That, that can't happen. Now I have never had it go that far. But I have had people that have actually said, and it wasn't actually African American; it's Chinese. The guy just had something against the Chinese, like the Chinese culture just was against it. And we brought an applicant, and the student was a Chinese student that was here for Texas A&M. And the guy said, "No, I don't want him." And I had to educate the guy. And I said, "Either you move him in, and he pays you, or you fire me, and I'm going to sue you." And I'm going to sue you with everything and report you to the fair housing. So it's up to mm. you. Either you accept it and we move forward, 
or I turn around and sue you and I will report you. So at that point, most of the time, the client is going to back down most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. Okay. So will you get into this? Maybe not. You may never see this in your entire career. Could you get into it? There's a possibility. Okay. But that's why I want to educate every one of you so that you're prepared. Okay. That is your job. You have to be prepared on these situations because you never know who you're going to end up with, okay? And you've got to be able to get in here and tell them. I'm not, and I've told a person before, if Miss Linda was a racist person and she's doing that, I'm going to tell Miss Linda blatantly, Miss Linda, I'm not going to jeopardize my real estate license, my career, my, my entirety of my life just because you want me to do what you're, you're racist about. I'm not going to do it. I, I refuse. And at that point, I can terminate that relationship, okay? So very key in these particular situations. Um, again, there is also the situation where people will refuse or sell to handicap people, okay? They will refuse to sell to them. Uh, there's also, again, same thing coming with the terms, conditions, privileges. You can't discriminate because the person's handicapped. Uh, refusing to permit reasonable modifications if a handicapped person, Mr. Eugene, wanted to rent your house and they wanted to put a ramp in front of your house, you cannot, in that particular situation, you can't say, no, I'm not going to let you make reasonable modifications to my house. If you do, guess what ends up happening? You end up in that particular situation, you're breaking fair house. Okay? You have to. Now, if, for example, Mr. Garrett is the handicapped person and he wants to put a ramp, that's fine. But guess what Mr. Garrett has to do when he moves out? He has to take it down and make it back to the condition in which it, what it was. Okay. So we're, again, going back there, refusing to make reasonable accommodations to a handicapped person. After 1991, failing to construct multi-family handicapped accessible dwellings. So if you build a property after 1991, you have to have a multifamily handicapped accessible dwelling. Okay, which means if it's going to be two stories, guess what you got to do? You got to find some way for that person to get to the second story. They so can't just put stairwells in the front of it. You actually have to have a way to get them up to the second floor. What about a pulley with a board and a rock? No. It has to be safe. Can't be something that simple. All right. Denying real or MLS access or real estate professional association membership status to a protected class. These two MLSs would actually go over and deny access because they didn't want certain people in their MLS. Can't do that. Discriminating in real estate related transactions against a protected class. Let's talk about familiar stats. HUD regulations state that families with children must be provided the same protections as other classes of persons protected by the Fair Housing Act. Well, that's, that should be common sense, right? Well, no, here's the deal. Mr. Eugene uh, say, well, let's say Mr. Jacob and Mrs. Jacob, okay, husband and wife, they have, uh, they, they live in a very high-end neighborhood, we'll say, okay? Their property is $3 million, all right? They're living there, and they're, it's a subdivision. And it's all basically, uh, you know, retired, we'll say retired people. They're, they're, they are very, it's either retired or high-end people that live in this neighborhood. Well, what happened was they didn't want Travis and his wife and kids moving into the neighborhood because of why? Well, the kids may be running around screaming and hollering, playing basketball, baseball outside and all this, and it disrupts their lifestyle. So the thing is, is that they used to try to say if you were married and had children, you couldn't move in the neighborhood. Because it was an a area that was for single or married people with no children. Do you see what I'm saying? So in these particular situations is we cannot discriminate based upon people having families. 
The law broadly defines familiar status to anyone younger than 18 being domiciled with a parent or another person having legal custody of that individual or the designee of such parent or other person having custody with the written permission of such parent or other person. Okay, It was very broad in that particular situation. The protections also against the discrimination on the basis of the familiar status was to apply to any person who is pregnant or in the process of securing legal custody of, its, or of any individual younger than 18. There are some places, and this is why it's very key right now, and it's, it's a huge thing when regards to familiar status. There is some situations in this particular matter that I want you to be aware of. Like right now, College Station is currently passing this rule. And the rule is, is that you cannot have more than two unrelated individuals. Okay. Well, what's the problem with that? Well, what if, say for example, that Mr. Grossman, you and your wife are living in a property, you are related, and you end up, your brother Aiden wants to move in. Okay, well, not we'll say brother, we'll say friend. Your friend Aiden wants to move in with you, my brother. So he wants to move in with you. So it's you and Mr. Aiden. And then Mr. Aiden wants to end up, he wants to bring in, he wants to adopt his niece or nephew. Okay, well, is there a problem already there? There's already now three unrelated individuals in that property. See a problem? So in this situation is you cannot discriminate based upon the familiar status. Okay. You have to end up, you have to watch this. This is why you always got to watch the government. Because like I said earlier, the government makes the best choices for all of us. Right, Travis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they do a wonderful job, there, right? Okay. So... If you believe that, like I said, I've still got that oceanfront property in Arizona, and I'll throw in that Golden Gate Bridge, too. So y'all just let me know. I'm okay. on board. You on board? Yeah. All right. All right. So the Fair Housing Act, bans on the family status discrimination can also prohibit the advertising that indicates any preference, limitation, or discrimination based upon the protected class statuses. Again, in regards to the fair housing exemptions. These are all exempted parties from the act. So if you're a religious organization, you're exempt. If you're a private club, you're exempt. If the occupancy standards are set, you're exempt. If there's a drug conviction, you're exempt, okay? In regards to familiar status, in regards to single family housing. And they have what's called Miss Murphy. And we'll talk about these in just a minute. Okay. Now, the HUD regulations are the following provisions of the law. It is unlawful to sell or rent or to negotiate for the sale or rental in regards to the provisions of HUD regulations. You cannot, in that situation, go in and try to regulate or basically try to force the same things of what we talked about in fair housing. You cannot try to unlawfully sell or rent uh, to an individual or try to make it where it's basically unfair, if, we're, if we want to use that term. Again, discrimination in terms, conditions, and privileges, as well as in services or facilities, any other prohibited sale or rental conduct, and discriminatory representation on the availability of the dwelling. Okay. This comes back to that key one though, right here. This is the big one that we were talking about earlier when we were discussing at the beginning. You cannot, number one, we wanna start with what I call steering, okay? If a client comes to you, a, okay, and they walk in and you notice that they dress very poor, they, um, you, you just tell that they're not middle or high class. You just know they're lower class, okay? So you go over and you tell that couple, well, I think you would be better fit 
over in this area of Brian, I don't think College Station is good for you. I don't think that's going to work for you. What's the problem if you do that? What are you doing? We know what it's called, but what are you doing? I mean, I'm discriminating based on their class. You're not really discriminating. You're not really steering. discriminating. You're steering them. No. But what's happening here? You're ending up, you are, you are telling them where they belong. Mm -hmm. Can we do that? No. No, real estate agents cannot tell a person where they belong. God, could you imagine if real estate agents got to choose where each other got to stay? <laughs> that would be a nightmare. I could already tell you. They probably put me in a slum somewhere. <laughs> so, but the thing is, is that you cannot steer your client. Now, could you say that the price range you're looking at is going to be here? Could you tell them that? Yeah, the price range right here is about where you're going to get 1200 a month. However, I don't mind showing you any property you want to see, but you're probably going to see that this is where you're probably going to end up being at. Okay? Because that's a factual statement. That's not you pushing them in that direction. What about redlining? What's redlining? Well, redlining is this simple. And what I always want you to picture in your head is this. When you hear the word redlining, think of a map that's in front of you and somebody draws a red line around it. Okay? Redlining happens a lot with banks, not real, real estate agents. Redlining says, in this neighborhood, we're only going to lend up to X amount of dollars. So in this particular area, it's low income, so we're only going to lend up to that area $100,000. That's it, because that's the that's lower income. But over here, this is the high high area right here. This is Cinco Ranch, so we'll we'll let you know a few million go over here. But over here in the third ward, we're only going to view maybe 100, 200,000. That's it. Okay, you can't do that. You cannot say for those of you here in, in College Station, you can't say Miramont will give a few million. Well, over here in, in South Bryan, we'll make it, you know, very cheap. Can't do that. Okay. You have to make it fair. Discrimination in residential real estate uh, related transactions. Of course, we've already kind of talked about those. Blockbusting is where you kind of create that panic selling. Trying to end up, oh, y'all better get out of here. Travis moved in the neighborhood. Everybody get me out. Quick, quick. Go, go. Okay. You, 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 can't, you can't do that either. All right. You got to end up in that particular situation. You got to make it fair to everyone. Now, in regards to any type of uh, disparate treatment or impact, okay, the, basically the housing discrimination is typically going to involve intentional acts of dis discrimination that are directed at protected or at those protected by law. It's sad to say this. Now, like I said. 90 to 95 percent of all transactions and real estate agents and all of that very good honest truthful matters there is no hiding stuff and all of that but you will you will i promise you you will get those few that are just going to be blatantly rude they're just mean they're just mean people mean hateful people that have nothing better to do than make other people's lives hell just to be honest with you, okay? The best thing I can give you in that advice is don't deal with them. Don't try to be a hero. Don't try to play, you know, justice warrior. Don't, you, you ain't got time for all that, okay? Don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy. Don't worry about it, okay? We're not in the business in this particular situation we're not in the business to try to right the wrong of everybody. It's not what we're doing. We have a duty, we have a job, and that duty and that job is actually going to end up being to our clients. We're not here to play social justice warrior, okay? We want to make certain that it's fair across the board. Now, understand also in this particular situation that as we go along with this, there is the impact rule, and in February of 2013, HUD created or issued this impact rule that basically established a three-part test in regards to proving 
that the impact violation of the Fair Housing Act, even where the practice is going to be facially neutral. Okay, we've got to make certain that as we're doing these things, we have to make certain that we are treating things properly. We are not going in and treating people wrong. We're not treating them indirectly, uh, you know, basically being unfair. We have to treat everybody where it is fair across the board. When dealing with disability, how often would you say you deal with disability? Uh, not very often. But I will tell you this in this situation. Disability can be a lot of things. Okay? You have to be very careful with disability. Now, you will see it more in this area, or if you're around a college, you'll see it. But a lot of people right now, one of the biggest ones is, and Miss Lila probably knows exactly what I'm talking about. College kids want to bring their, their pet with them from school or from home to school. Yes, well, I know. <laughs> and that she knows exactly what I'm talking about there. So what happens is, is they want to bring their pet to school or to, to the deal. Well, Mr. Eugene, we're going to say, well, actually, we'll say Mr. Jacob. Mr. Jacob, we say, has a house that he's renting. And Mr. Jacob has a house that he's renting. And Mr. Aiden, you want to bring your Rockwaller to school or to, 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 to the town you're moving to. But Mr. Jacob has a very strict policy of no pets. Okay. Well, you happen to love Mr. Jacob's property. You just, it fits everything you need. But the only thing is, is no pets are allowed. So what does Aiden do? Brings his pet. He calls Miss Leela and he goes to her for therapy. And he tells her, Miss Leela, I've got to have, uh, you know, a letter from you because, you know, this is my emotional support animal. And, and I got to have it, you know, because if I don't have, you know, my Rockwaller with me, I just, I can't survive, Miss Leela. And so Miss Leela writes him a note, gives it to him, and he goes and he sends it to Mr. Jacob with his application. And Mr. Jacob goes over and says, no, I refuse to let you bring a, walk, a Rockwaller into my house. What's the problem? He's discriminating. Okay. He is discriminating against a person that is handicapped in some form. So in these situations as real estate agents, you have to be very careful in regards to how you deal with this. Because unfortunately, over the time, it is hard, I want to be real honest, it's hard for me as a therapist in some situations when I'm when I'm meeting or talking with a, a client, it's difficult for me to tell sometimes who truly honestly needs the support animal and the ones that are aiding that's just want a, a letter out of me so that he can go over there and move his dog in so he don't have to pay security deposit. You see the problem here. So in that situation, and what's even worse is there's plenty you can Google online you can Google get paid for a, a, a letter and, and get your, your certificate. So it's from our aspect, from a real estate standpoint, it's very hard because if Aiden comes into my office and applies and I give it to Mr. Jacob and says, you know, here's an applicant and this person needs a dog and he says, I don't want any pets. Well, it puts me in a very bad situation because of what? If I tell Aiden no, I may be discriminating. So you have to be very careful. And let me tell you how far it has gotten out of control. About three years ago, I was in a meeting and we had a very long meeting on how we were going to handle this. There was a therapist in Austin that had signed off on her client to have a Shetland pony in the house. Okay. That was her emotional support animal. Yes, Mr. Travis. My dad was a pilot for Southwest, and he said, because they have to accept 
if you have to bring your dog on the plane to kill a transport animal, they have to accept that. And he was like, I've seen dogs, chickens, goats, fish. There you go. Hamsters. Yeah, pigs, everything. Yep. So people will just do whatever. So Yep. So that's how they, that's where therapists sometimes are, there's that little loophole where therapists are sometimes, they overuse it. Okay. I'm all for you using something that you need. Yep. If there is a need for it, go for it. But there are, and especially in this area, there's a lot that will use it. I mean, you have to watch out. I, I know that, like you said about chickens, there are some people that will fight the city and say, well, I have chickens in my backyard. And the city says you can't have those types of animals in the city limits. Well, they're my emotional support animals. It, it kind of puts you in that situation that it's hard. Okay. But again, you have to understand, like as we're saying here, that you have to follow these different types of uh, handicap. You gotta, you got to go through here, even to the point, guys and gals, that alcoholism is a handicap. Okay, meaning that if there are certain reasonable requests by a person that is an alcoholic, you sometimes, as a landlord, might have to make those changes or allow those certain changes. Okay. Again, HUD regulation further defines the term physical or mental impairment to include orthopedic, visual, speech, and hearing impairments, cerebral palsy, autism, epilepsy, I'm, I'm horrible with these words, just by the way, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, human, or basically HIV, uh, mental, and I hate saying retardation, mental disability, okay, emotional illness, drug addiction, or other addiction caused by current illegal use of a controlled substance and alcoholism are all classified as impairments by law. You see what I'm saying here, okay? To discriminate in the sale or rental of, or to otherwise make unavailable or deny a dwelling to a buyer or renter because of a handicap of that buyer or renter, a person residing in or intending to reside in that dwelling after it is so sold, rented, or made available for any person associated with that buyer or that renter. Okay. Again, you cannot discriminate against any person in terms of conditions or privileges of sale or rental of a dwelling or in the provision of services or facilities in connection with such dwelling because of a handicap of that person or renter, a person residing in or intending to reside in that dwelling after it is so, so rented or made available or any person associated that buyer or that particular renter. The design and construction requirements of new housing. In the 1988 Fair Housing Amendments Act required that all covered multifamily dwellings first occupied after March 13, 1991, must be designed and constructed with certain accessibility enhanced features, including a building entrance on an accessible route. Okay, that's simple things as a staircase. I mean, as a, I mean a sidewalk, like a, what's the word? Not sidewalk, walkway. The walkway has to have a ramp entrance. Do you see what I'm saying? So you have to have a little walk, like a little slope, a ramp. a ramp, so that they can get to the building. If the building is two story, there has to be a elevator or a big slope. Or a big slope, <laughs> yeah, a huge slope. Okay, really long, very big, right? Um, public and community use areas must be readily accessible to and usage uh, usable by handicapped persons. All doors designed to allow passage into and within all premises must be sufficiently wide to accommodate persons that are in wheelchairs. Okay, so we have to make certain that persons can end up. Now, here's the problem. Mr. Eugene, you go buy a building that was built prior to 1991. You want to go and do some remodeling to said building. Do you have to follow these rules when you do your remodeling? 
1991. Yes, you do. <clears throat> if you make the amendment, you make any changes, you have to now bring it up to code. Oh. So, so that's why a lot of times people will not make changes to their buildings because if they do, they have to bring everything up to code. That's why a lot of times you will see people just use the building until it literally collapses because at that point they'd have to rebuild it anyway. So they'll just use it till the usage is gone and then they'll build. Okay, they'll tear it down and rebuild. And by the way, to, I didn't know this till the other day. How much do y'all think it normally costs to tear down just like a single family house? Like to bulldoze it? 40 bucks. How 40, much? 40 bucks. No. $3,000. Okay. To tear down a house and have it hauled off. I have That's heard. Not as much as I, thought. I, I thought it was going to be a lot more than that. Yeah, I thought it was in the three thousand dollars. Yeah. We're not talking about a huge house. Yeah. We're talking just basic house. Yeah. You can come in. All it does, they just take a bulldozer and they end up. They just kind of go through and just knock it all down and pick it up, put it in the deal, and drop it off. There's someone in downtown Bryan who needs to do that too. Yeah. Uh -huh. So again, accessibility features mandated for new, and again, if you see the key word here, what? Multifamily. Multifamily, am I talking about single family? No. No, so your houses that you live in, this does not apply. Right. I'm talking multifamily. There must be an accessible route into and throughout the dwelling unit. Light switches, electrical outlets, thermostats, and other environmental controls must be placed in accessible locations. Guys, when we go into the restrooms, what's always one thing that, for those that can walk, what's one thing that drives everybody crazy? Oh, the urinal. What happens with the urinals? They piss all over the Not. <laughs> so much oh, sorry. oh my God. You end up, you have to end up, one urinal is at standard level. And what happens with the other one? It's real low. Why is that? We have to accommodate. We have to accommodate. So in those situations, you have to watch these things to ensure, and the same thing with light switches. You watch a lot of times light switches are in the newer place, a little bit lower than where they are standard. Why? Because not everybody can reach that. Okay. So these are very key in these particular situations. Again, reinforcements must be installed to bathrooms to allow for the later installation of grab bars. So they have to set it up so that a grab bar can be installed. Kitchens and bathrooms must be designed to allow people in wheelchairs to maneuver around the space. In regards to aids, okay, one thing in that situation. <laughs> In regards to AIDS disclosure, okay, fair housing concerns. You have to understand AIDS was a big thing, okay, for stigmatized properties in which the current or former occupant is infected with human, or basically HIV, am I going to try to say that? HIV or is diagnosed with AIDS, okay. What happened back in this time when all this was going on? If you had HIV or you had AIDS, the thing that people thought was if you even touch somebody or in the same room with them, you could catch it. Okay. So it was kind of like what we're dealing with with COVID. We don't know everything about it yet. So everybody is very what? Cautious. Okay. Very cautious. So in those particular situations, what has to happen is the same thing happened here. People did not know a lot about this AIDS or HIV. So what ended up happening was. They were scared to even use toilet seats, the same toilet. If, say, for example, Mr. Grossman had AIDS, AIDS wouldn't go sit on the same toilet he was on. He's scared that he would end up catching it. Okay? So, again, you have to be very careful in this situation. Anything that you know, if your client, Travis, say that your client tells you, I have AIDS or I have HIV, that is fine if they tell you. But can you go put that on social media or put that on MLS or any of that stuff? No. Why can't you put it on there? It is personal information. It's personal information. It's nobody's business. Aiden, do you really need to know that to sell a house? No. 
No, you don't. Okay. That's right. Either way, you don't you don't need it. Okay. In 1988, the Fair Housing Amendments Act established that persons with handicaps, which includes those diagnosed with AIDS, were part of the protected class. According to HUD, it is illegal for real estate agents to make unsolicited disclosures that a current or former occupant of the property has AIDS. You cannot disclose that. The purpose of the ADA is to eliminate the discrimination that's directed toward the approximately 43 million people with a disability. And it allows them to enter the social and economic mainstream of society. ADA's purpose is to assist individuals with disabilities. That's the purpose. That's what they shoot for. The ADA has not intended to cover housing and it specifically exempts facilities that are covered or expressively exempt from coverage from the Fair Housing Act of 1968. Your newest one, and this actually, I believe yesterday passed the house, the newest change to civil rights is the LGB, uh, LGBT, uh, and I think Q has been added as well to it, community, okay? <clears throat> it is the new guidance treats gender identity discrimination as gender discrimination under the Fair Housing Act. Approximately 20 states and the District of Columbia, as well as more than 200 cities and counties have additional protection that prohibits the discrimination against the LGBTQ individuals, okay? So this is the newest one that's out there. Do you think in this situation, do you think the test is going to talk about these? Yes, yes. And they will harp on these because everybody is familiar with race, creed, religion, and all of that. A lot of people are still not 100% certain on this one. The final rule, effective March 5th, 2012, it implements the policy to ensure that its core programs are open to all eligible individuals and families regardless of their sexual orientation, gender identity, or their marital status. Okay. The owners and operators of HUD-funded housing or housing that are insured by HUD are prohibited from inquiring about an applicant's sexual orientation, gender identity, or denying housing on that basis. Okay, it comes back to that same situation. It does not matter what you're, and this is what we were talking about earlier, depending upon what your, your moral beliefs are. Morally, you may be against it. But again, if you are saying, you know what, I'm against this whole thing here, and I think the, the government should put a stop to it, well, what does that then now open up? Then the government can do what? They can do whatever they want. If they can go in and they can discriminate against this one group, what stops them from retroactively going back and taking back the rights of everybody else? Okay, you gotta kind of be careful in these situations. That's why you have to, like I tell people all the time, when you walk into that door, it's business. But when you walk outside that door, it's what? Personal your personal life, okay? You have to put your hats off, as they say. You have to, when you go into business, you gotta take your personal hats off, put your business hat on. When you leave, take it off and put your personal, okay? But again, you've gotta understand in this situation that you're going to be faced with this in this business. And it's not just this business. It's not just this business. It's any business, you have to watch for these particular situations. In 1989, the Texas Fair Housing Act, it provides for the complaints to be heard in the state district court or by the Texas Workforce Commission, the Civil Rights Division, instead of the federal district court. So why do they do that? Because Texas wants to do what? Keep disputes where? In our state. How many of y'all want, again, like I said earlier, how many of you want the federal government coming down to tell you or hear your cases or stuff. No, we don't want that, okay? So in this situation, Texas said, you know what? We'll hear our own complaints here. We'll deal with them here. Now, does that mean that the federal government cannot trump the Texas state? No, they can't. They can come in and trump it. 
So no state court can enforce deed restrictions that involve discrimination. Okay. The Real Estate License Act prohibits discrimination by a licensee. And the Texas Fair Housing Act is a substantially equivalent to, guess what, the fair housing laws. Any complaints that are actually going to end up being filed with the Texas Workforce Commission Civil Rights Division, they may be filed within one year. They only give one year of the alleged act, okay? The Texas Workforce Commission Civil Rights Decision has up to 100 days to investigate, attempt to obtain an agreement, and file a report of its findings. If no conciliation agreement, then the workforce must dismiss the complaint and file or file charges. Okay, so again, there is a process. So if Mr. Grossman feels like he's been discriminated against, guess what? Well, Mr. Grossman, if you've been discriminated, you have one year from the alleged act to file a dispute. Okay. If they do decide to file charges, if charges are decided to be utilized, then the egregious party has 20 days to elect a jury trial in a state district court. These dates are very important, okay? Otherwise, a case will be assigned to an administrative law judge, okay? And that judge will have a hearing and the decision will be by the courts and the court can grant injunctions, either actual or punitive damages or other appropriate remedies, okay? The decision by an ALJ can award actual damages to the aggrieved party, and the ALJ may impose penalties and or issue an injunction up to a $10,000 fine for the first offense and up to $50,000 for any further violations within a seven-year period, okay? So up to seven-year period, they can end up, they can go and hit you up to $50,000, all right? Now, litigation, there can be through the attorney general or through private litigation. And they also can bring in the Department of Justice. So in this situation, when there is a case, they believe that there is a big enough case, what they'll end up doing is they will go in and the attorney general can bring the case or litigate it. They can have private litigation or the federal government can step in, okay? So these are all very important situations. What about enforcing these fair housing laws? Well, there are certain implications for brokers and sales agents, okay? They can create and maintain an open housing market. That's a very important one. They can deliver the same service to everyone. They can comply with federal and state laws, display their fair housing posters, and also follow HUD advertising procedures. It is very key by all means that you're not discriminating, okay? We have to make certain by all means in this situation, it's simple, it's simple. And I, and I tell people this all the time is, we would not have issues if people would just do what? Follow the golden rule. Treat people the way you want to be treated. If Aiden is an atheist and Mr. Eugene, you're a Christian, like I tell people, does not almost every religion teach you to do what? To treat that person the same as you want to be treated. Every religion. So if he's an atheist and you're a Christian and you say, well, the government needs to take away his rights. Is that not what your religion basically tells you you shouldn't be doing? Right. Yeah. Okay. So in these situations, you deliver the same service to everyone. It doesn't matter that, say, for example, that Keith, we're going to say, is a diehard Republican, and Travis, you're a diehard Democrat. Okay. It doesn't matter. It should not, that should not even be a, a discussion. Like I tell my people, you stay away from politics as far as you can, as much as you can, okay? If your client brings it up, just smile, nod, let them say what they're gonna say, and, and just move along, change the subject. You do not wanna get into a battle 
over what? Over politics. You're not going to win. I promise you. If they are a diehard, if Travis is a diehard Democrat and Keith is a diehard Republican, guess what? You're not going to change their mind while you're trying to sell them a house. I promise you. It ain't going to happen. Okay? There is no way you're going to change that person's mind. Same thing if Aiden is an atheist and Mr. Eugene, you're a Christian, you're not going to miraculously, if you're the agent, change Aiden into a Christian. Not going to happen. Okay? not in showing a house so in those situations you just deliver the same service across the board you may not like it you may not feel comfortable but let me tell you you have a duty you have an obligation to be the professional okay if a complainant does not have to prove the specific intent they don't have to do that they must only prove that the discrimination actually occurred so in that situation, say for example, that Mr. Garrett, he ends up, he goes over and he is in the office here. Miss Linda, he, he's up here and, and he's sitting in the agent's office. You're sitting in the lobby working and all, and a, a same-sex couple walks in, okay? And they said, well, we would like to spend $5 million on a house. Okay, we wanna buy a house. And Mr. Garrett, you say, well, Mr. Garrett, I've got a client here that's wanting to go see some properties. And he walks out and he says, are y'all like roommates or are y'all friends or what is this? And they say, well, no, we're married. And Mr. Garrett says, well, I ain't showing you crap. Don't you do that, Garrett. I ain't going to show you nothing. I don't believe in that crap. Well, guess what? Mr. Garrett, we don't I'm have to show us. That there was a there was no intent here, right? All they have to show is what? That he discriminated. That's it. They don't have to show any intent. They just have to show he discriminated. Okay? But like I tell my agents all the time, first off, if that happened in my office, Garrett would be terminated immediately and be gone. Because here's the thing. When I'm in this office, I have a duty to do what? To treat everybody the same. Job. I'm not here to judge. That's not my job. Okay. My job is to do my job, not to end up judging or trying to convert somebody or things like that's not my job. Now, if I want to go when I'm and say I go to church and, and I want to go and, and go knock on the door and eight you happen to be an atheist and I knock on your door outside of my job, well, if it's outside of my job and I'm going and I'm doing a church function, that's a different thing. But when I'm in this office, I have to do what? I have to treat Aiden with the same respect that I treat everybody else with. Okay? This kind of puts me in a bad situation because here's the thing. Is I sponsor all of you. I sponsor everybody. Do you think that everybody may have the same views as I do? Do you think everybody has the same religion that I do? Do you think anybody has the same you know, moral or ethical being? No, everybody's different. Okay. That's why it is my job to be careful as well. Because if Aiden is atheist, I have to also do what? I have to also make sure that I don't discriminate against my own people. That's why it's, it's this way. I treat everybody the same across the board. You show me respect, I show you respect. That's how it should be. And that's what you come back to. Because if discrimination, and understand, discrimination can be the same thing like what we've been talking about in the other things. It can be through actions. It doesn't have to be verbal. It goes back to that thing with Garrett. Miss Linda, you tell Garrett to go show him properties. And he's, oh, I don't want to deal with this. Well, is he not discriminating? Yeah. Yeah. You go on in, you don't have to verbally say it. You're action speaking. You roll your eyes, you don't call the person, you don't text the person. All of that's potential discrimination. Okay? Violations that are subject to criminal and civil liability, as well as license revocation and suspension. HUD sometimes, and this is no lie, HUD sometimes actually used testers to check those real estate offices. There was actually one about four or five years ago I had heard about 
Funyman sends out testers, and what I mean by testers are these are basically mock people that are coming out to the office, and they just happen to come into your office. And they walk in, and when they walk into the office, they'll send normally a white couple. So they may send Mr. and Miss Eugene, y'all come in, and they'll see how does the office treat Mr. and Miss Eugene. Is the, is the office nice to them? So if Mr. Grossman say you're sitting in the front, Mr. and Miss Eugene walk in, and he gets up, hi, Mr. and Miss Eugene, how are you doing? Would you like some water? Would you like some treats? Would you like this? Blah, 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 blah. Here you go, you know, and, and come on back. You come sit in here, you know, sit in these nice executive chairs here. You take make yourself at home. And then what happens is after he does that, y'all leave. And then they send in an Asian couple. And Mr. Stephan, when the, the couple walks in, he, they say, hi, we're here to look. Oh, go sit down. I'll deal with you in a minute. Or if he says, can you uh, take, take a seat here? I, I'm busy at the moment. Well, guess what? He might actually legitimately be busy. But because what he did, he over and beyond went for the white couple and not the Asian couple, he's done what? She was discriminated. There's a case out of Austin. They did a test. They went to an office. This lady, this real estate agent, she, a uh, white couple came in. They walked in. She offered them water. Would y'all like some water? And they said, you know, yes, thank you. And so the agent went and got the water and gave it to her. They waited a few days. They sent in an African American couple. And it wasn't the same day. It was a few days difference. African American couple comes in, and the lady took them back, showed them properties and all, helped them find a house and all, and let them leave. But what did she not do? She did not offer her water. She had her license suspended for six months because she did not offer the water. Well, what if you were out of water? I mean, you're to offer some other drink, but in that situation, she had water. Oh. Okay, but the thing is, is that you have to watch out for these. How you treat every person that walks in that door, it has to be the same. You can't discriminate. It has to be the same. The Equal Credit Opportunity Act of 1979 or 74 prohibits against discrimination by lenders in the granting of credit based on race, color, religion, national origin, sex, marital status, age, or dependency on public assistance. It also identifies the credit for which may be considered for qualifying a loan. Further, it applies to the institutions or persons who make loans on a regular basis, but not to a seller who carries a back or carries back a purchase more money mortgage. And it provides that a borrower is entitled to a copy of the appraisal report if he or she paid for the appraisal. Very big one here, that last one there. Who is entitled to the appraisal? Mr. Aiden, who's entitled? And who's the borrower? The buyer. How about Mr. Eugene, the seller? Is he in, are you entitled, Mr. Eugene, to the appraisal? You're selling? No. The only person that's entitled is the buyer. Today, Mr. Grossman said, well, I'll just send him a copy of it. Ooh, what did I tell you, Mr. Grossman? What do you have to do? You have to get permission from the buyer because the buyer paid for it, not Mr. Grossman. I never even received a copy of it. That's right. He did. That's right. Does this say anything up here that the agent gets a copy? No. Only the buyer. If the buyer wants a copy, I mean, the buyer's agent wants a copy, they have to end up asking the buyer. Okay. Creditors must inform rejected applicants of the basic reasons for denial or termination of credit. And it must be in writing within 30 days, unless the denial is based upon the consumer credit score which requires disclosure of the score and the related scoring information. Ms. Linda, you currently right now just ran a person's credit or an application. Yes. 
How many days, Miss Linda, after you make a decision, do you have to send a letter? 30 days. 30 days. <laughs> so in that particular situation, once there is a decision made, you have to notify that person either positive or negatively if they are going to end up being accepted. If it is rejected applicants want specific reasons for the denial, other than their credit score, they must request the information from the creditor within 60 days. Okay. Prohibits under the Mortgage Home Mortgage Disclosure Act of 1975, it prohibits redlining by lenders. Lenders must collect and report annually the race, ethnicity, sex, and income of mortgage applicants, as well as the type of loan they want, where the property is located by census tract, and whether the application was denied, approved, or withdrawn. Why do you think they need that information, Mr. Travis? Well, let's see. If we got to give them race, sex, and income, and we're noticing that in the, say, Asian market, it's constantly denied, what do we assume? There's discrimination. There's possible discrimination. We need to check into it. Okay. So banks have to show that they're not discriminating. That's why a lot of banks, if they're going to deny a loan, they have to give a lot of information because the fact is, is if somebody comes and challenges it, they have the proof. Okay. On some high price loans, lenders must report what's called the spread between the interest rate given and the interest rate of the lowest risk loans. Enforcement efforts are resulting in more loans in minority and low income areas. So in this particular situation, they are now starting to make certain that banks are not basically lending to just rich people. We want to make sure it is fair across the board. Okay. In the Community Reinvestment Act of 1977, it requires lenders to make home loans in the same geographic areas where depositors are. It applies to the same lenders as the ECOA, the Equal Credit Opportunities Act. It requires certain disclosures and notices to potential borrowers. One thing I want to say real quick about this ECOA, when you take your test, are they going to spell out Equal Credit Opportunities Act? What, Mr. Travis? Willie? No. Mr. Stephan? No. Mr. Aiden, do they? No. So does that mean you got to know all these acronyms? Yes, sir. Would help a lot. You're going to have to know them. So you're going to have to know what Equal Credit Opportunity Act is as well as ECOA. Okay. Same thing. Same thing. Mr. Grossman, read that real quick on the screen out loud for me. Um, Section 8C of the Fair Housing Act makes it unlawful to make, print, or publish, or cause to be made, printed, or published any notice, statement, or advertisement with respect to the sale or rental of a dwelling. That indicates any preference, limitation, or discrimination because of race, color, sex, religion, handicap, familiar status, and national origin, or, or an intention to make such preference, limitation, or discrimination. So my question for you on this is, does this mean in this particular situation, can I, uh, can I discriminate at all? No. Can I make my marketing where it discriminates? No. Okay. I have to treat everybody the same no matter what. Okay. Again, it applies to all advertising media, including newspaper, magazines, television, radio, and the internet. There was what's called the Hunter case where a homeowner or a landlord whose dwelling is exempt from coverage under the Fair Housing Act is not free to employ discriminatory actions though. Okay, so 
just because, Mr. Eugene, your house may be exempt from fair housing, it does not mean that you can blatantly put out there, my house is available to everyone that's not Asian. Okay? You can't blatantly put it out there like that. All right? You may yourself want to discriminate if it's exempt, but you cannot mark it. You can't be like, hey, everybody, I can, I can rent to everybody but Asians. You can't do that. Okay? You have a duty to end up, you can do what you want with your own property, but it has to be quiet, per se. You see what I'm saying? In the HUD advertising guidelines categorize the discriminatory advertising into three groups. Advertising that contains words, phrases, symbols, or visual aids that indicate a discriminatory, discriminatory preference or limitation. That means simply using an item such as a symbol or an aid, I may not, I may not say, for example, I want, I don't want college students. I may put something to the fact if using how everybody loves their little memes and all that stuff, I may put like a, 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 a guy doing this, an emoji that does this, and then put a little college student next to it. Did I say no college students? Did I verbally say that? No, what did I do? I used symbols and phrases and visual aids to imply it. Okay. So again, in that situation, or I may put 55 plus with a, with a basically a little X through it. Okay. That basically is implying what? I don't want nobody over 55 in my place. Okay. Advertising that selective use media, human models, logos, and locations to indicate an illegal preference or limitation. So if I end up, I have a bunch of college guys and gals sitting around and we're, we're doing photos and all this, and we're like, life's good here in Justin's place here, da, 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 and it's just a bunch of college kids. What am I implying? I only want college kids. I only want college kids. I don't want nobody else. There could be this potential but violation. Various types of discriminatory advertising practices that are condemned. I'll tell you one that's going to drive you crazy. Okay, when you start listing your properties on the MLS, there's a hospital here by the name of what, Miss Linda? Like Baylor, what? Baylor Scott White. Oh, you have just said a bad word. Don't back shame on you, Miss Linda. What, what did you? What's the hospital called? You can have oh, uh, uh, what, what's it called? Baylor, Scott, and White. You cursed. Why did you yeah. say that bad word? You, you said the word white. You can't say white. Oh, jeez, Liz. I'm serious. When you put in Baylor, Scott, and White, even though that is the name of the company, you put that in the MLS, it will find it. And it'll ask you to remove it. Yes. If you put in, what was the other one? Jack and Jill. You put in Jack and Jill bath. That is a huge no-no. That needs to be rephrased. Yes. Because of the fact is, how do we know that it's not Jack Jack or Jill Jill? And God forbid you, Miss Lila, I got a question. What bedroom in your house do you and your husband sleep in? What's that bedroom called? The master. Oh, no. Oh, my God, Miss Lila. Oh, you really cursed today. You can't use the word master. They will flag it. Primary. That's another one. You will, and if you do real estate, huh? On all the MLS sheets, if you look at it, it's called the primary bedroom. Yes, it's called the primary. You're right. It's called the primary bedroom, not the master. You have to watch these different things. And I promise you, over time, they, there's a list. Literally, if you Google HUD, I think it says HUD word or realtor HUD words or something, there's a list. And you'll read through it and you'll be like, really? Like, really? 
But the thing is, oh, and you got to be careful with the word walking. Walking distance. Because Travis may not be able to walk. That's discriminating against Travis. I've seen that on the mud. And it will get flagged. Yes. So you have to be very careful with these different words. They will flag. So them. are you supposed to say you can float? I mean, what do you what do you say? You, you, you give a distance. It's within it's within like a few steps. Which you gotta watch the word steps too. No, you have to yeah. Them. So I'm just saying it's, you know, in a block away or two blocks away. Yeah, a few blocks away. You have to be very careful in your words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they will come and they will flag it. And it can be a fine. And they're not pretty fines, I promise you. Huh. In regards to the, uh, the HUD regulations that prohibit the use of catchwords, phrases, symbols, photographs, and illustrations that convey that dwellings are available or not available to a particular group. Kind of like what I was saying earlier, where if I end up, I put, you know, the 55 plus with the big circle and an X through it. I didn't say it, but I'm using the symbols, okay? So you gotta be very careful. And, and I'm gonna tell you guys and gals, some of the stuff in here is so ridiculous, but the problem, the reason it's in there is because somebody has actually done it. They used it. Okay. So again, words that describe uh, descriptive of the dwelling, landlord, or tenant need to be reviewed very carefully. Words that indicate race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familiar status, or national origins. Catch words used in discriminatory content. These are the words that they're going to catch you. Restrictive, exclusive, private integrated, traditional, board approval, or membership approval are going to be those catch words they're going to go on. Because what's this mean? It means that we're trying to keep out certain people. Symbols and logo types that imply or suggest race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familiar status, or national or or origin colloquialisms that apply or suggest race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familiar status, or national origin. This is always the best one, like I just said earlier, directions to real estate for sale or rent can imply a discriminatory preference, limitation, or exclusion. You got to be very careful using the word church, near a church. That can't be used. Why? Because Aiden here is an atheist and he don't go to church. So that may, he may find that discriminatory. Okay. Area of descriptions or names of facilities. Miss Linda right there. Names of facilities that cater to a particular race, national origin, or religious group, or used exclusively by one sex may basically indicate a preference. Again, selective use of advertising media or content is unlawful. Advertising identified in HUD regulations is based on race or other prohibited basis. Selection of who you use as your human models. Like I said earlier about Mr. Grossman, he always <coughs> uses white females. Well, is that discriminatory? Yes. Okay. Selective geographic advertising. Selective use of equal opportunity slogan or logo. Mr. G Mr. Grossman selectively puts it where he wants to when it's convenient. Can't do that. Other types of discriminatory advertising. HUD regulation prohibits the practice of refusing to purchase or publish advertisements for the sale or rental of dwellings because of the race or other prohibited basis. It may not be subject to different charges or terms. The equal housing opportunity statement is as follows. We pledge to the letter and spirit of the US policy for the achievement of equal housing opportunity throughout the nation. 
We encourage and support an affirmative advertising and marketing program in which there are no barriers to obtaining housing because of race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familiar status, or national origin. The HUD publisher's notice is that all publishers should publish at the beginning of a real estate advertising section in the HUD publisher notice. Publishers will not intentionally accept discriminatory ads because if they do, they may be not liable for violating the Fair Housing Act. Of course, you've all seen the Fair Housing poster where HUD requires that its fair housing posters be displayed in any place of business where real estate is going to be offered for sale or for rent. Okay. Mr. Grossman, could you move for just a minute? So I want to sit down for a second and try to show everybody something before we end tonight. Let's see if I can't find it real quick for all of you. I want y'all just to see this. Let's see here. <clears throat> so these right here, if you notice, there are three pages. These are going to end up being your words that are prohibited. Cannot use the word adults only, bachelor, black appliances. Okay. Um, you cannot use church street, country club, drinker, can't even use the word disability, female, you cannot use, you cannot use gender, God, gentleman, grandpa, grandma, Hispanic, Hindu, interracial, Jew, Lesbian, Latino, you can't say really much at all. It's a house. It's a house. That's right. Because they're retired. You cannot say up here retired. And I say that. I'm stuck on black appliances. <laughs> yes, you the can. Black appliances. <laughs> or, or, or actually, right here, Miss Miss Leela, look, all of these right here. If it says, oh my appliances or black powder or black top or black cabinet any of those you can't say black mountains yep oh my God. You, cannot, <laughs> you cannot say those uh you can't say things like asian restaurants or mexican restaurants you can't say those you can't say agile <laughs> nope nope what are you, what are you to there you can't say bachelor so you was that um child I saw on there? Child is right here. Yes, sir. Cannot say child. Yep, child children. Okay. <laughs> yep. There is a list of them. Wow. So what's it, Pisco? Where? This is, is that it's supposed to be Episcopalian? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. There is a lot of them as you go through here. I always like to bring these up just so you know. Like right here, see how they have Indian? You can't use Indian restaurants, Indian rivers, Indian town, Indian beaches, Indian hills, Indian meadows, Indian road, Indian any of that stuff. You can't put those in there. Italian restaurants, clay, tile, you can't say that. You cannot put these these words whatsoever. Cannot be utilized. Okay, I have a question. Yes, Ms. What Lee? if the road is actually called Indian Road? So that's why what will happen is if the road is called Indian Road or um, like Spanish Pond or Spanish Lake Road, it's in a separate category in the MLS. So if it's a street name, it won't flag. But if you put it down in private remarks or in public remarks, it will flag it. Mr. I Mr. also believe a lot of these will be flagged, but they have somebody check to make sure they're real. Yes, because there are a lot of listings that will have. Yes, I mean, it being in a college town, the fact that you can't say the word college is kind of ridiculous. Like, yes. So there are a lot of. I mean, they, most they, most they, MLS they, paperwork has some oh, some of these words on it. Right. And I believe that they get flagged if somebody checks to make sure it's not saying, you know, whites only or something like that, and then basically from there. 
they want to stay chained their game. Do you have and, and Travis is correct. I just wanted to show you these lists. Okay? I just wanted to show you this. Because of the fact of the matter is, is that as you look at this list here, they are they every MLS has a person or persons that you can go back over there. There is a person or persons that checks it. So if they were, for example, walking distance, okay, that would be flagged, walking distance, okay, but they, it will flag the person at the MLS, the MLS will send a notification to you, so Aiden, they send you a notification and they say, you know, Miss Leela sees it, she sees you use walking distance, she's going to notify you that it is a forbidden word, she suggests you change it, but if it's not purposely discriminatory, they normally won't do anything about it. But if you were to go back down real quick, Stephanie, if you were to go, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, oh, right there. If, if Mr. Eugene, you put whites only in the listing, well, that's pretty blatant. That's probably not much. That's yeah. probably the worst they're, they're going to They're going to probably remove your listing and may report it. Okay. That's like the worst one. Yeah, if it's if it is direct like that, it's going to get flagged. But like Mr. Travis said right there, student, you see student right there. Okay, you're going to have students. That's going to happen. Well, you're like a college town. You have plenty of listings that will say perfect for a student. Yeah, you have to be somewhere close to campus. Or yeah, whatever. like a if, lot of listings say that. Right. I mean, in that situation, that's understandable. But again, you need to be aware of these words because these will be those words that will get flagged. See, like Mexican restaurant. There, there sometimes are in certain areas that that's a big thing. Like you're by the Mexican restaurant, like the big main one, or the big Italian restaurant. Okay. But by. Oh, you must be employed. Or you must be. <laughs> yeah. You know, and there's things like that, you know, that, that are that are going to be utilized, but you have to make certain that you use common sense, okay? You can't just be very blatant, you know? M Mr. Uh, Eugene, you can't say, you know, I'll only rent to people that believe in God. You can't say that because you're, you're discriminating. But you could in some situations, you got like even country club. There are some houses that are in a country club, okay? They're in, they're in it. Well, it depends on how you're using it. Yeah, you got to be very careful. Like and it, to the club to see it. Huh? You got to go to the country club to see it. Well, that's where it comes into mandating. It's some some places, and you got to be careful with this. Some country clubs have they the houses are built within the country club, but the country club is very exclusive, mm -hmm. and they may have very strict requirements mm -hmm. to join this country club, which could end up doing what? Discriminating. Okay. So you got to be very careful when you're going through these different things. Like I said, is you've got to look at them. But the one, like Miss Leela said, that is the normal number one that's most likely utilized is that one, like Miss Leela was saying, was the black appliances or black countertops or things like that. You can't you can't use those words. Okay. So, but again, that's just kind of what I wanted to show you. I want y'all to see those words. Uh, they're always being updated. They're always constantly being changed, but you do need to be aware of them, okay? So that you're not, and if you ever are doing a listing and it gets flagged, don't freak out immediately. Because like I said, 95% 95 of realtors don't do it personally, okay? Or it is by mistake, okay? All you gotta do is, you know, talk to your broker, talk to your lead or whoever's training you, talk to them. They can end up telling you if it's a big thing. Okay, ninety percent of the time, it's resolved pretty quickly. Okay, and it's nothing major. Uh, I think out of the entire time I've been on the board, I think we've only had maybe one incident over four years that there was a problem. So it doesn't happen a lot. And even that one incident was an accident. Okay, um, but again, that kind of gives you the, the things. Like I said, I wanted y'all to be aware of. Uh, before we call it class tonight, is there any questions over any of the content that we've talked about? Anybody have questions? I know tonight was a boring class. I know. Whenever I get into this part, it can put a lot of people to sleep, but I want y'all to be prepared. 
All right. On that list of prohibited words. Yes, sir. Was SSI like social security income? That is correct. Remember, you cannot discriminate based okay. on a person's uh, income, public assistance. This one right here, Stephanie. Right, yeah, SSI. Yeah, that's what he was asking. Good question, good question, Gary. All right, anybody else have any questions? All right. Justin? I'm, yes. Reminder about the student center on the Oh, oh yes. Way. Thank you, Miss Linda. Okay. Real quick question. Um, I'm going to tell you about something and then I'm going to have Mr. Grossman go through and ask. Uh, we are actually trying to, Ms. Linda and Mr. Aiden uh, and I are trying to actually set up a mock closing uh, with University Title. Okay. Um, it's in person. It would be in person. It's not going to be by Zoom. So I won't unfortunately be able to do it by Zoom just because of their, their confidentiality stuff. Uh, but if you would like to join, okay, I guess we'll just do it this way, make it easy, Stephen. If you would like to join and, and be in attendance, what we would like you to do is could you email Miss Linda or call Miss Linda and Miss Linda will put you on the list. What we're trying to do is get enough people that want to come and be in person and actually go to it. We're trying to set it up. Now, I know I have some people that are not in this area. Miss Linda and I are talking and possibly seeing maybe to find a title company down in your area that you can sit in and watch. A lot of them are willing to do it. But those of you that would like to sit in in the group, we're trying to end up Kind of yeah, right there is one in houston that if yeah, there's one in spring actually uh that we probably can get that set up as well but if you would like to go and be in attendance with that please call miss linda the number and i'll give you the phone number real quick just you don't have to call you can just text miss linda text miss linda your name and that you're interested just text her at nine seven nine Five five seven two two eight nine. Okay, and that's only for this class, this recorded class. Okay, so in that situation, if you're interested and you would like to attend that, text Miss Linda at nine seven nine five five seven two two eight nine and just give her your name and who you or give her your name and tell her that you're taking the classes and you'd like to do the mock training the mock closing and your phone number please. well it would be when they text you okay so in that situation you'll have their information there and then miss linda will put you into the group and she will get you situated to sit in the mock training I would like to do this training within the next week to two weeks. Okay, so you're prepared and you will have a title company that will go into depth with you. Now I will tell you, it will not be after hours. It will have to be between eight and five because they close at five. So if you can't make it, no big deal. You can always, when you get your license, we can always set something up or work something out so you don't have to freak out. But it's just for those that happen to have the free time, we would love for you to be able to participate. I will say dress attire is going to have to be nice because we're probably going to go to the title company. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go to suit and tie, but I'm saying nice starch jeans and a nice polo works, okay? Um, or being in slacks and a polo, whatever you want. Just I'm not wanting you to be dressed down because we're actually going to the title company. Yes. Yes, dress professionally, business casual. Okay. All right. Anything else, Miss Linda, that I'm missing? That's it. Okay. Any questions from anybody? All right. Then we are done for tonight. We will pick back up on Monday. Y'all have a good weekend. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'll talk with.